Today, I would like to talk a little bit about how you can debug your test or web driver or and we're gonna show some deeper layers. And I wanna take you to the top process that I go through when I run into a problem, basically, that I cannot yet explain. The only thing I can tell is like, I know it's not my production code and I know it's not my test, so to say. So how can you then tell like, okay, I have this issue and in this case, I was presented with this issue. Hey, Aaron, tomorrow I would like to have a discussion uh, with you because I found something, cannot explain it yet. The guy is actually sitting over there. <laughs> he was my colleague back then. It was like, can we have this chat? Because I don't know what the hell is going on. Help me. So one of the things that I always start with is if somebody has your issue, me or somebody else, the first thing you want to do is like try to set a baseline, right? You want to reproduce the issue that somebody is having. So for me, that's like, okay, here I have my uh, element, which is a web component, uh, which I defined here above. It really doesn't do anything, but if this uh, element is uh, disabled, I expect it to be disabled. So is that actually the case? So when I actually run this, it wasn't working. And then my, my, my head goes like, okay, but I cannot explain why yet, because we have WebDriver.io, I know WebDriver.io, it's very simple, it uses the protocol, so why isn't this working, right? So looking at this code, I can already tell like it's, it's using WebDriver, it's not here. So then we have to go a step further. So luckily, we actually have a specification with uh, Christian already showed. And here we can see we have a slash enabled endpoint where we can already see like, okay, all these things are needed for the element to be uh, disabled or enabled. And here you can see like set enabled to false if a form control is actually disabled. So then we can click a little bit further. So then we are probably on a new page saying like, okay, it's actually disabled when it conforms to all these things listed here. So it put an element that's disabled, et cetera, et cetera. And in my case, I had a web component, so we need to look at the former associated custom element. I have no idea yet what that means, but I click further. So let's find out what it means. So then again, I'm presented with a huge list of all technical stuff and I'm like, okay, I really wanna know more about this custom element definition. Please tell me more about that because I don't know. And then finally, I'm presented here with, okay, so a form associated Boolean. If this is set to true, the user, ag uh, user agent treats elements associated with this custom element definition, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, I don't know what this means yet, but I'm gonna look this up. Luckily, we have another specification, MDN. And there I see that if the attachment inter attached internals is used, we can actually set the form associated with true. We can attach the internals and then finally, my element should be disabled, right? That's the idea. But then, uh, first actually I still look up the uh, attach internals because I saw that before in the previous specification. So I already know, okay, a disabled internal boolean can be used and then actually try this out. So if I set all these things with area disabled as well, I try it all should be disabled, but alas, it's still not working. So why is this not working? I'm really getting frustrated here. Like, okay, it's a simple test. The specification says it should be working. Why is this not working? So then the next step will be when you go into the uh, driver, so the Chrome driver or the Gecko driver and all these things, you can actually look them up, right? So. I went to the contributing page and I was like, okay, maybe you can just look at the source code and find the issue there. So if you re reach to this point, you can already like have a plus, pat yourself on the back because like this is just, most people wouldn't even go this far. It's like, if you have all this information and you give this to the maintainers of a project, you can already help them like a ton. Like it's so much information. Like I tried this, I tried that. and then with all this information, we can like reproduce, try to reproduce the issue, verify that every step is indeed correct, and then we say, well, you did so much, we can dive deeper for you. And that's exactly what I did here. I've never done this, so I looked up, okay, so apparently you have to go to the Chromium project itself. So it's separate from the Chrome driver project, but it's in there somewhere. So then I go to the source, and finally I get to the actual project and I'm like, damn, I have no idea where to start here. It's like overwhelming, 
but I do know a few issues. So what do I see when I open a project? I see some CC files, I see a H file, I see some uh, PY files, and I already knew that the drivers use some, something called atoms, which are JavaScript scripts that are injected into the browser, which WebDriver also does. So I kind of knew all these, these things, so I knew it was a C project, I knew it has some Python, I knew it has some JavaScript, but how do I continue, right? So luckily there's a uh, search uh, component part and I just look for enabled. Do I find anything? And here you can see I, I found uh, quite a good hit uh, directly already. Execute is element enabled. I'm still not sure if this is the right thing that I'm looking for, but hey, it gives me something. And this is just a reference. So when I click it, I find some other files that it uh, is used in. And when I click on that, it actually gives me another reference, which is actually the command itself. Now, like I said, I already knew kind of that the uh, web driver has atoms. If you look at the Selenium specifications, it also mentions this a little bit if you also dive deep in that. So here you can see that it tries to inject the web driver atom called is enabled. And that's in my head already like, okay, I hope that the next layer is gonna have this, this wonderful solution where the, uh, the problem might be. And then I'm greeted uh, with, uh, sorry, the next one. Then I'm greeted with this. <laughs> it's like, okay, this, this wasn't what I was expecting, but it, it might be there, right? <laughs> and then, uh, like, as you can imagine, th there's a build step behind this and it's all, you, you cannot actually access the real code behind this, but yeah, it, it should be there. Entering the You're entering the <laughs> matrix. And I'm gonna spare you the details of how I completely, yeah, uh, how do you say that, reverse engineer the code, but this is in the end what you end up with. And the fun thing is that uh, the top variable, the IB variable, that one is very important to remember, as well as the op group, the option, the field set, and the legend. Those are important. The rest, you can kind of forget. Trust me, I debugged it all and I know what it does, but those are the important parts because if you then go to the next part and we take the specification that we saw earlier, you can actually see that it, if I arrange it a little bit, you can see that the button, the input, and it's all there, right? And lastly, the two that we're missing from this are the field set and the custom element. But as we also saw, the field set was actually already mentioned as well. So that means that the uh, custom implementation for the form associated custom element is actually just not in there. And that's why the problem actually existed. It's just not there. It's not here in the Chrome driver, but it's also not in the Gecko driver, Safari driver, it's just non-existing. So I tried them all. And that's actually when you can say like, okay, out of all of these, I'm missing this. And that actually brings me to this slide. So what is my top, top pattern behind this? So every time I have an issue, the thing that I see most is people try to um, prove that something is not working, which is actually for me the wrong approach. Because if I'm trying to show about someone hey, I have this problem, and I actually try to say what it not is. So I, I try to say, okay, um, I looked at this, this spot, and I'm saying like, okay, is, it, is the problem here? No. Then I don't know what it is yet, but I'm gonna look further to exclude more and more and more. So when I have a car, for example, and somebody tells me like, hey, I have this weird sound and, uh, that the car is making, then I ask them like, please come over, and I put my ear to the car, it's like, Okay, well, it's not the engine, it must be the exhaust, right? So I'm not saying like, ah, it must be the exhaust. Why would I say that? I mean, I can exclude things, right? I already know it's not the chassis because why would it be that? But yeah, so trying to exclude things for me that, oh, actually, let me go back one, is actually the right step. So first I investigate the reported issue, what I started with, it's my first slide. And then can you reproduce the issue? Because if you can't reproduce the issue, why would you continue, right? There's nothing, nothing more you can do, actually. Uh, maybe the report was false, maybe there is no issue. Um, but if you uh, can reproduce it, then you can actually start your investigation and you can, in this case, check if the issue is in the test code, your test code, for example. If the uh, issue is in the test code, then again, you're, you're already done, right? You know where it is, you can either report it or fix it. But if you uh, cannot reproduce the issue, then maybe it's in your 
test tool. Uh, in this case, Pub Driver Rail. Now, all these layers that I'm going to explain, I kind of know this, but since there's all, sp uh, all specifications, there's documentation, there's people like us that uh, can help you with that, you can go like uh, uh, layers deep to see, is it in the command? Is there an atom in the command? If yes, is the problem in the atom? Is it not in the atom? Maybe it's the protocol. It's like all these things you can go deeper and deeper, and at the end, well, if it's not in a browser, that's kind of where it ends, right? It might be like even deeper in the OS, but I'm <laughs> not going to go that far. Uh, I've been there even, but yeah. Um, I think Christian also showed that um, you, uh, there's actually a site called uh, wpt.fyi where you can find all kinds of tests done for the different uh, browser vendors. And here you can see the test for this specific endpoint, so the slash enabled endpoint. So you can see that uh, we do port form control, we have no such element, uh, the field set, which we saw earlier as well. But then for the problem that we saw, there are no tests. So maybe we should just add a test here, right? So that we can actually show to everybody that, hey, this impl implementation is actually missing from all these drivers. So it will all be failing. <coughs> now, I have another example that I want to go through, and it actually uses the same thought process that we used before. So first we have the reproduction, and then we go further right. So <laughs> here I uh, got an issue reported, is displayed API works incorrectly for Chrome? Okay, let's find out. So the first thing that I did was like, based on the report that we got, try some variations and see what that gives me. So in this case, I try to test. This is just a simple example. I did all the cases. <coughs> I logged them very easily in WebDriverO. And then for Chrome, I got all these reports back. It looks a bit, little bit complicated, but on the left, you have the values that it got returned. And on the right, you have the, value, uh, the uh, cases that I ran, both for the is displayed as well for the uh, is displays in viewport command. And I compare that with Safari. Well, so far, I don't see any difference in the in the uh, what we get back. So, is there an issue? I don't know yet. But then, I actually ran it the same in Firefox, and I see well, I don't see an issue there, but I do see an issue here. It's not the same. So why would that be? Well, at that point, I found out that the way that we implement th these commands, they actually had some exclusions. So. Sometimes we have a uh, exclusion for certain things. In this case, some script got injected for, uh, uh, for Chrome, or I think it's actually the other way around, for Safari, which was uh, in, um, injected for the other browsers. So removing this and always doing the same thing removed the issue. So after that, this was uh, where I still had an issue, and I still wanted to prove more. So then I had this case where the uh, top one and the bottom one were actually very different um, because the issue that was reported was it's saying it's not uh, working in Chrome. Well, that wasn't true actually. It's not working because it doesn't have a width and a height. And if an element doesn't have a width and a height, well, of course it's not going to be visible because, yeah, it's going to be there, but it's not there at the same time. So we could exclude that as well. But then I still had this weird issue where it does have a height and it does have a very large top and left. And I used some very specific values here and I will tell you later why exactly. Because when I then ran this very simple JavaScript get bound in client track, I was suddenly greeted with this value. Wait, a height of minus one and a width minus one? How is that even possible? This is JavaScript. This is not any tool, any framework. This is just the browser. Um, so that's really strange. And the weird part was that when I actually increase these values, it would actually become larger. It would be minus two, minus three, minus four, and it would grow and grow and grow. So this is not an issue in any, any automation tool. This is just Firefox not being correct. So I, created, I went to uh, Bugzilla, created my account, reported the issue here, and said, well, this is my finding, 
this is what I uh, see in the browser, is this an issue? And uh, first they said, no. I'm not <laughs> it's not here, but they said, no, 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 this is not an issue. But then somebody actually came back and they said, well, actually, it's reported this issue, and it is indeed a finding. So that's, that got confirmed. That was actually my first browser bug, which I probably put on LinkedIn, like, hey, I do, I, I'm, I'm proud. <laughs> it's <laughs> really cool. But yeah, I really love doing this stuff. It's like going deep, find these issues, and I really hope that showing how you can reproduce an issue, how you can um, take all these steps of, uh, instead of like proving like, hey, uh, it's not working, and then giving up on like uh, saying like, uh, hey, uh, tool, fix it for me. Like, well, why? You, you have the specification, you have the documentation, you have the, uh, the web standards. Uh, all these things should help you to already say like, if it should be working or not. And then you can say like, okay, this is the specification, I'm seeing this, there's a mismatch, right? So that already by itself, having those two next to each other and saying that they're not, not equal already tells you so much. And I, I, yeah, I would love for you to all do that more because that's the power of WebDriver and uh, using that implementation. That's something that other tools simply don't have. If DevTools doesn't work, is there a specification? Can you go deeper? I don't know. So I wanted to leave you with the uh, some websites that I uh, used. So in the top, you find some web driver. I use the Chrome driver. I uh, also link the web driver too, which is the uh, the web driver specification, the WPT.FAI, uh, where the WPT actually stands for the Web Platform Tests. And uh, also link to the that I reported and our own website. Thank you very much.